right here on the River Islands guest line on Willard and Dibs. Glad you're with us here. If you're getting in your car as you finish up your day of work, that's exactly where he is as well. Good, uh, good afternoon slash evening to you, my friend. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? We're doing all right, man. But I mean, obviously, everybody's just frozen with all of this drama about uh, about Brandon Ayuk. Have you talked to him recently? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I bet. So, I, I, how's he doing? And and what's what's he thinking in in the way that you can tell us? I don't know what he's thinking. I mean, he's like any other player, man. He just want to play football. Like anybody would. It's I just want the 49ers to realize what they have and Kyle Shanahan fix this situation. Like you can't have like it really is disheartening when other teams, plural, are willing to pay you so much more than your own team, but you're still willing to take less to stay with your own team. It's great, like figure that out because Y'all did this with DeForest Buckner. Y'all remember that, right? They traded him to the Colts and drafted Javon Kinlaw because he was supposed to be the answer. And I'm probably guessing if DeForest Buckner was still with the Niners these last few years, they may have a Super Bowl. He was that good up front. And so don't just think you can draft a guy and replace a guy like, it's not that easy, and the Niners have been really, really good without Buckner. But they may have a Super Bowl if they had them, so don't let a total of five, six million dollars cost you a Super Bowl. And is that really where the gulf is? Because, you know, we got reports, TJ, that New England was willing to pay him 32 if he'd accept a trade to New England, and the reports are that he didn't want to do that. So is it money? Is it winning? What is it hey, with Brandon? It may have been a little more than 32. Hmm. Now, you got a team willing to pay you that much, and you're not even asking that much from your own team. Like, come on, man. Like, so, it, it's, at this point, it's like, I'm sure the Niners are pissed. They're ready for it to be over. And I'm sure BA is pissed and ready for it to be over. Just come back together and find something that works, like 28. Like, you like you wouldn't give him $28 million a year, but you'd give him 26 Like, over the course of three years, that's $6 million. Like, in the world of football and the grant, that's nothing. That's nothing. And so, yeah, I know you have Trent Williams to worry about and Brock Purdy next year. But if Brandon Ayuk is not on the Niners, I don't believe they're still going to be a very good team. I don't believe they're in an NFC championship game. TJ Hushmanzada with us here on Willard and Dibs. Okay, I have so many questions. Um, is it your thinking that this is more about AAV as opposed to total guarantee? Because you, you've mentioned AAV a couple of times. Is that what this is about? Um, obviously, I think it's about everything. You you want average per year to be 28 if you're with the Niners. The Niners want it to be 26. Um, the total guarantee, give or take, some teams are going to offer more than others. Like, you guys know more than I do. So he turned down New England. What do you think that guarantee was going to be? What you think is going to be, it was going to be less than what, I mean, more than what the Niners were offering. So is it about money? Yeah. But is it completely about money? No, because he could have gone to a team that was offering him way more. He chose not to. And so like Kyle Shanahan is like, he's a headstrong person. He's a great coach, but he's a great coach that should probably have two Super Bowls also. Uh, let's go back to Atlanta when you're calling the plays. You should have won that. Uh, you should have won this past season. Patrick Mahomes throw the ball. Get that ball to Christian McCaffrey. Game's over. You guys, you're a Super Bowl champ. And so, just like there's some missteps that B.A. may have taken, 
Kyle Shanahan has had missteps also in coaching in the biggest games of his career. And it doesn't get easier by getting rid of good players. So, TJ, and again, TJ Hushmanzada with us on uh, on the Brandon Ayuk situation. The way you're talking sounds very much, and I think this is the perception right now, that, that, that Brandon very much still wants to be a 49er. What about the Steelers? All things being equal, would he rather be a Niner or a Steeler? I don't know. But I bet he'd rather be a Niner. I mean, there's going to be hurt feelings on both sides. Like, when stuff like this, like, it's like arguing with your wife or your girlfriend and stuff. When I'm mad, I may say some things that I don't mean. I may mean them, but I really don't mean them. I'm just saying them to make you mad. And so I'm sure there's been some things said both ways that may upset both parties. But I told him this, like, if I got a pick, I'm going to – I'm staying with the Niners. Why wouldn't you? And so it's up to John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan. And hold up, hold up, hold up. What's the owner's name? Jed York. Jed York. Jed York. Jed York. You listen to this, Jed York. Make it happen, Jed York. That Jed York, make it happen. Don't let feelings come into place when it's business. You can't let your feelings get in the middle of business. Get it done. Like you, it sucks when another team appreciates your talent more than the team that drafted you. Because oh, we want you. We want you. Well, well, show me. Why you want me to take less? You're not giving anybody else less. You you didn't you didn't give any. Who else played on their five um, contract? Bosa didn't. Debo didn't. Why do I have to? Like players look at things like that, and you just want to be fairly compensated. Ba had 105 targets. I believe C.D. Lamb led the league in 171 targets. I believe. So he had 61, 61, 66 more targets than B.A. I believe he had 400 yards, a little give or take 400 yards. So out of those 66 targets, B.A.'s probably going to catch at worst 40 of them. He would have led the league in yards. He would have led the league. And so you have a good player that wants to be there and he's probably done some things along this process that you don't like, as have you. Figure it out, Jay York. You the man that's signing the checks, baby. <laughs> Get it done. I mean, it's it sounds so easy the way you describe it, but it feels like they haven't really talked in three months. Is that what you're hearing from Brandon? Like the, the, the negotiation process has come to somewhat of a screeching halt over these last few months? I'm not going to lie. I don't really get into it with B.A. like uh, when the last time y'all talk, what they offering you. Um, we like we don't I don't talk to him about that. I just try to give him advice on what I would do, how I would go about the situation where men he you know, he may agree with me. He may disagree with me. And, and so I, I just like I've been in this situation when I left Cincinnati now. <laughs> we ain't talking about the type of money that he getting. I wasn't getting nowhere near that. But I was in, so let's clarify that. But I was in this situation, and I just always feel like I feel like it's better when you stay with your team. It is. They know you very well. You know them well. You have you go to a new team. You okay? Let's just say, for instance, you go to the Steelers. Who the quarterback? Who the quarterback? Maybe we Russell, don't know. Maybe Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. Justin Fields, and then they have a young receiver in George Pickens that wants the ball and is going to get his target. Y'all have to navigate that. They already have a system with the Niners where C-Mac gets his touches, Kittle gets his touches, Debo gets his touches. Like, it's just different. And so I just feel like when I left Cincinnati, I was just like, ah, oh, man, I should have stayed. And I think B.A. may have that if he was to leave San Francisco because I had it. But, again, we're different individuals. He may not. I just feel like it's best if you if you stay. And the one man that can make it possible is Jay York. If he values B.A. the way I think he does, he will make it happen. Like, you can't let your feelings get in the middle of a business decision that could possibly win you a Super Bowl. 
TJ, you mentioned talking to Brandon and giving him advice. What would your advice to him be if the 49ers say, we do not have a deal with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and so we've got no deal, and 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 you're here under contract. What would your advice to him be? On the fifth-year option? Yeah. Oh, man. I can't even give him no good advice for that because I, if I gave him – the advice that he should be given would be, you know what? They disrespecting you. Just go play this out. And then you can leave as a free agent. That's the advice he should get. The advice that I would give him, I'm going to be pissed off because this isn't how y'all have done business with your best players. They've always come to a deal. So you don't consider me your best player. So now the whole season, I got to play on a contract that I'm unhappy with. So now I'm going to be unhappy and you're going to see that at times. The locker room is going to see that at times. And it may get combustible because Shanahan is not a punk. Shanahan is going to say what's on his mind. Hmm. And you don't want those type of confrontations. And, and so that would be the hard part is if there's no deal and he has to play on that option, that would, that would suck because I know as a player – you're just going to be so angry, so distraught. And again, Shanahan has the coach and entire team, and he doesn't want that type of energy in the locker room. And so he has to do what he has to do. And I understand that, but that I don't think that would be a good situation at all. TJ, it, let, let me, it, this will sound a little bit like devil's advocate, but let, let, let me see if you think this is fair. Because I'm betting the 49ers are at least attempting to use this line. You've mentioned a couple of times that they've taken care of all the other guys in a certain way. Why not Brandon? What if the Niners are saying that's simply a matter of timing? We have so many good players to pay. We've got a quarterback that we weren't paying during all those other contracts, and now we're going to have to pay him. So the timing is such that we're just asking you to take a little bit less. Is that fair or no? Oh, that's not fair. What that, that don't have nothing to do with me. Timing. I mean, timing, I feel like I was born too soon. Timing, the way these contracts are, like, you can't change that. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I, there's, like, no. It, it's, listen, I'm going to just tell y'all this. The, for you guys also and the fans that are listening that are 49ers, I, I, some of my best friends are 49er fans. So I don't really like the 49ers, but I like them because of the players that I know. I like Debo. I like Trent Williams. I'm Real cool with uh, B.A. But, like, some of my childhood friends love the 49ers. Some of my best friends love the Niners. And when the Niners are winning, they always talking trash. So I don't like that. But anyway. (laughs) 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 But it's like, why does the timing aspect of it affect me business-wise? Why? And so, yeah, you can say that. But. You can always find a way. They they stand behind, oh, the salary cap. There is always a way. That's one thing that I learned from talking to general managers. There's always a way to figure it out if we want to figure it out. If we don't want to figure it out, we stay, we stay the salary cap so that the fans are with us. Yeah, that, that makes some sense in terms of the PR, but you also mentioned the timing. And what about the timing of the way the market went this year? Because it felt like 26 was going to work for BA back in March, but those other deals landed. And all of a sudden now he's thinking 28, and New England's offering more than 32. Does the timing of how this is all played out affect the reality that this deal's not done? You want to speak of timing, if they had a better timing, they would have gave them a deal sooner. And they could have got in front of this if their timing was better. Get out in front of all these deals. Sign them to a deal sooner. And how? you know what's crazy? Like, there might be other teams willing to give him much more. How do y'all know that? Y'all just talking about two teams. Yeah, that's fair. No, we know there's no, more. No, it's fair, yeah. I, you know, I, I, I'll say this, TJ. I was critical of this situation yesterday From this perspective, if Brandon says, hey, Niners, I want a certain number, and the Niners say no, then he goes, well, then you need to trade me to someone who will. And the Niners do that, and then Brandon says, no, I don't want to go there. That that feels a little bit disingenuous, to be honest with you. 
So why didn't he? Uh, yes. Why didn't he take the New England offer? I don't know. You would now. That's one thing I can't even give you an answer on. I I can just tell you from my perspective. If I was DA, could it be? I don't know who the quarterback. Like, if we're specifically New England, who the quarterback? They don't got Tom Brady anymore. So it's like New England is not a free agent destination if you don't have twelve under center. And right, so but he's he not a free to, agent, though. He's not a free agent. But when you, in essence, if he's not a free agent, then just trade him to whomever. So they're treating it like, because New England is not going to trade for him if he doesn't agree to a deal. Right. So in essence, he can kind of pick and choose what he wants to do. I, I, I just feel like they need to figure this out because it's lingering. And I get it. You have, to me, the best player on that team that's not in camp. And that's Trent Williams. He's the best player on that team. They need to figure that out also. Brandon Ayuk has never had a big contract like the rest of the best players on the team have received. And so... You just want to be appreciated. And a lot of the fans listening, like, appreciate it. Like, you can live off all that money. It's about what is fair and what your peers are being paid. Because if their timing was a little better, they probably could have got them for 26 if they would have done it sooner. So do you think it's fair if his asking price, Brandon's that is, from March suddenly changed come July when the market shifted? Of course. Hey, if you're going to go buy a house and in March, they will sit because y'all worse. You know, you're in San Francisco now. Huh. So it's expensive out there. So let's just say in March, the houses were selling for $2 million. And you was like, oh, let's put an offer on this house. You and your wife, you hesitate. And then in August, it's $2.3 million. You think they're going to take $2 million? Or they're going to want $2.3 million? Two million. That's a shack now. <laughs> That's a studio. <laughs> TJ, TJ. The, the, yeah, the go price ahead. has gone up. The, I mean, it's gone up. They waited too long because of the words you guys are using. Timing. That part's fair. It's fair. Uh, TJ, what about this? Did you hear what your twice former teammate, Chad Ochocinco, said on the uh, on Shannon Sharp's podcast about Brandon, did you hear this? Nah, nah. What do you say? Okay, take a listen. Nah, it's still there. It's okay. still there. You, you got to think they 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 they're losing one individual that is. I'm not saying this in a disrespectful way. It's a position that is replaceable. If you think about the NFL in general, receivers are a dime a dozen. The special ones are not. The top five, the top three, special. But everyone outside of that is replaceable. You can find and get that production from so many other players, especially maybe the ones that they're going to have fill that spot. The way their offenses offenses run, they'll be fine. The way Shanahan calls plays, they'll be fine. He essentially says B.A. is replaceable. Well, let's find out then. If that's if the 49ers feel that way, you'll find out. You'll find out. Um, everybody's replaceable until they're not. Just like they thought the Forrest Buckner was replaceable. Uh, how'd that work out? Hmm. Still good. But did, did, did Javon Kinlaw replace Buckner? Oh, no, no, no. He not even with the Niners any longer. No, he didn't. They think Pearsall can do it. But do they know? But I, the NFL is a business where when you draft guys, especially in the first two rounds, first or second round, and they play well, it's a badge of honor to get those dudes a second deal because you're drafting and developing well. That's what the good teams do. You pay your draft pick second contracts because you've done a great job with drafting. Baltimore Ravens are the best at it. The Philadelphia Eagles are the best at it. Very rarely do you see those best players from those teams that I just named find second deals with other teams. You don't see it. And so the Niners are going to be good with or without B.A. I believe they'll be better with him than they will be without him. Chad may have a point, but 
he's wrong in a sense the way Shanahan calls plays. Shanahan's a great play caller. You give me the best play call in the world. If I drop the ball, is it the best play call in the world? All right. Yeah, it becomes less of a good that, that, play. That catch that B.A. made that got tipped in the air yeah. and all that, how many dudes going to have that type of concentration and make that play? It's yeah. a dime a dozen. That's what Chad said. How many dudes are going to make that play? How many dudes going to get 1,300-plus yards on 105 targets? Y'all, once we get off of this, I want y'all, statisticians, do some research and see – how many receivers in the last 30 years have had 105 targets, around 105 targets, and had that many yards? And let's see what you come up with. Y'all let me know. <laughs> Shoot me a text once they figure that out. It's probably, it's <laughs> probably one. It's probably Brandon last year would, would, would be my guest. TJ, with the way you're, you're, you're sort of sharing this with us, I wonder just what you think is going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen, man, but I know what I want to happen. I'm I've been being very, very honest when I say this. I want them to stay with the Niners, man. Like, as much as I hate to say it because my homeboys is going to be talking trash to me all year because they're always winning now, but I feel in his heart of hearts that's where he wants to be. I feel that's where he should be. I just think it's so cool to be able to sign a second deal with the team that drafted you and – always have the potential to win a Super Bowl. I just think that's cool. Um, Phillies get hurt along the way, though, in these type of negotiations. The negotiation is where both parties bend and give a little bit, and you walk away from the negotiation feel like you both gave up too much, but you have a deal. That's a fair negotiation. If you can get a, more than 32 from one team in – the least amount that any other team is offering you is still more than your team. It's like, come on, guys. Like, come on, man. Just be fair with me. That's all he wants. And so I hope. I don't know where it's going to be, but I hope he stays with the Niners, man. I really do. Yeah, on behalf of the fan base, we do as well. But it feels like the deeper this goes, the less likely it is that he gets that extension. How much more time would you feel like as a player – you would have before you need to to stop this hold in and get into practice and start getting ready for week one. I know they just signed. Uh, well, I know him as Robbie Anderson, but he's yeah. chosen Anderson now. Um, I know they just signed him today. Explosive dude that can stretch the field. I, I just feel like you need a good week before the season to really like not the week of the week prior to the first week of the, just to kind of because once you start sprinting running routes full speed, and you're going to be a little sore for a couple of days, and you got to let that, you know, wear off, and then you're ready to go. And so he knows offense. That's the good part about it. He knows offense. It's not like he has to come in there and learn offense, but you got a guy that when it's one-on-one coverage, you know he's going to win. You don't hope. You know he's going to win. You can't say that about any other person or receiver on the 49ers team. You can't. Debo's a great player. But you don't know if he's going to win 95% of his one-on-ones. I'm confident that B.A. wins those. TJ, uh, we always, always appreciate you coming on and, uh, and sharing what you think and what you know on this, man. Thank you very much, as always. Man, y'all take care, man. Tell Jay York, man. Jay York, make it happen. Maybe you, <laughs> you got the end off sale, man. Make it happen, baby. Hey, is, it. Is, 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 it, is it repairable? Yeah, like, come on, Mark. You married, right? Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. Well, okay, so you don't say that ain't repairable. <laughs> hey, 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 too close to home for all of us, TJ. Hey, wait, 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 look, look. hey, all the people that's married, I'm married, right? All the people that's married, or you got like a long term spouse, boyfriend, or girlfriend, whatever it may be, we done all had some arguments where you be like. Man, it's it, man. I I ain't dealing with this person no more. Oh. It's over. With no way I'm and then you figure it out, right? You yeah. figure it out. TJ. So, hey, Mark couldn't figure it out, but the rest yeah. of us can, baby. <laughs> I was saying earlier, TJ, it's like Brandon Ayuk right now, he's sleeping in the guest room. Hey, but 
some you go sometimes you go from the guest room and then you right back in the master bedroom. It happens. Yeah. So I'm told. <laughs> and so, and some, sometimes it gets better when you move. But anyway, anyway, TJ, TJ, thank you, brother. Hey, Thanks, I TJ. hope your ex-wife ain't listening. Yeah. <laughs> I well, don't think so. Uh, probably not. Anyway, yeah. uh, all right. Thank you, sir. Good to talk to you. <laughs> Yeah, TJ, care, I love it. Thanks, TJ. <laughs> TJ as always, TJ Ushmanzada. Uh, my next one's probably listening.